know what I'm saying? Curiosity killed the cat. Well, why do you think that is? Because the cat was being nosy, meddling, and what you were curious about was actually detrimental to you. I mean, that's that's just really an everyday life. Like, mind your business. I think Thailand would uh, disagree with you. The cat, yeah. <laughs> he would but it's like, mind your business. I'm freezing up because I see somebody sent me a message, so maybe I'll get back on track. Okay, great. Somebody had sent me a message, that's why. Don't send me messages while I'm on here. Um, and Charles, you say, uh, King James authorized version, uh, he said authorized in a quotation version of the Bible. How old is the English language? No letter J, nor the other 25 letters. Well, you know, people will argue with that over that, you know, and we know that King James had his issues. He um, changed the Bible quite a bit. Who's to say um, that he didn't, um, I see you, Brian, you sending me a message during my live feed. Uh, <laughs> um, but who's to say that he didn't alter the Bible, which a lot of people are saying he did, you know? And so, but yeah, that, that's that. Try to have that argument with somebody who is dead set on believing every word that comes out of it. And John L says, anybody fight against their exploitation is an enemy. So we are an enemy because we desire to stop black exploitations by whites and do for self. The pimp never likes when the so-called hoe gets smart. No, absolutely. But you know, it's, at some point in time, the pimp has to wise up. Okay. The, the pimp needs to understand that everybody don't want your services, okay? <laughs> everybody don't need your help. I got this. All your songs sound the same, Ike. What? <laughs> right. Ike, you know, I'm good, Ike. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't need your services. I got the boulevard. I can man my own block. Thank you, though. <laughs> you know? And Al says, what about those nosy kids in the space horror movie, Jason X? Never saw the movie. Oh, classic. Classic. Was it really? Classic. I, I just... I, I, I think I only went as far as like um, uh, Friday the 13th, maybe. It started getting real stupid. That's when Jason that. became a Muslim. Jason, no. Jason X. It was Jason X, number two. That he became a Muslim. <laughs> Terry, you said the show from the 60s and 70s, Dave and, Davey and Goliath, although. Classic. There was a sign. Y'all watch too much damn TV. Uh, although there was. Um, Sign that danger, do not go, do not enter. Davey wanted to go into the cave. Oops. Yeah, Davey wanted to go into the cave, got trapped, and wanted to ask mm-hmm. why God let him go into the cave. There was a sign that said, danger, do not mm-hmm. enter. Enough said, right. No, Terry, uh-uh. That's supposed to be like this. No, Terry. But no, <laughs> we, we want the sign. We want the thunder in the sky. We want God to part the sky and say, listen. Don't take your ass in there. That's what we're looking for. But God was like, well, I mean, there was a sign. You just, you know, was looking for something else. And so, Jonelle says, they did right. Uh, they set an example. Absolutely. And uh, Shirley, you, you, you put question marks. Um, Cheryl, rather, put question marks. Um, I don't know what that means, if you can expound on that. And Steve, you says, um, yes, they are pepper spraying the women and children. It was horrible. Guy shaking my head. Trump has these. People hyped up. Wow. See, um, I don't have television, and I was kind of out of the loop this morning because I was researching this stuff. So I haven't heard anything about the latest developments at the border. But um, I, I'm going to reserve my my um, opinion and my comments about that. Just to, uh, Maybe we could talk about it a little bit later because it's not going to be a popular opinion. So I'm going to um, just kind of <laughs> keep, it, keep it on the minimum for right now. And uh, Darnell, says... Version is a viewpoint, not the full picture, just a glimpse from someone's point of view. And there are various versions of the Bible and doctrine. Absolutely. And so it's like, you know, me and Al was having this conversation last night where he says whenever he tells people he's not a Christian, and, and, and most of it as, as his family, his family members are saying, well, what are you, an atheist? And it's like, well, when did I say I was an atheist? Mm-hmm. I just said I wasn't a Christian. Maybe he's just spiritual. Yeah, but there's... Like, are you so lost to where you think you're the only, your religion is the only one and it's the right one? And because I don't uh, celebrate or uh, practice, rather, Christianity, now nah, I'm an atheist, I'm going to hell, and, you know, I believe in the devil. It's like, how do you even draw the two together? Weird. And Al said there was once a religious cartoon in the 70s called David and Goliath. Yeah, and yes. that's what Terry just no, said. No, no, that was Claymation. What's the cartoon? Claymation. It's Claymation. All right. And Terry says, black folks ain't welcome in certain parts of Mexico anymore either. And if you are supposed to be gone by 8 p.m., I'll be gone by 3 or 4 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, 
it's true. And so that's why I said, Terry, I kind of wanted to just reserve my opinion about the whole um, Mexican border thing. Now, listen, I don't advocate violence upon anybody. I mean, I just really don't. Uh, but at the same time, I think if you know you're coming to a very adversary environment, uh, and now this is a hostile environment, okay? We can say over here in America is a hostile environment. So as an immigrant coming from Mexico, you know that you are coming into a hostile environment. Why come over here? Now, I get it. You got some issues over there. You're coming from political asylum, but I don't know. Sometimes you got to weigh the, the, the lesser two evils, maybe. I guess maybe if you make it over here, they'll feed you and all. I don't know, you know, but. Well, like I say, come and experience this white man for all <laughs> his glory. Come and get it. Yeah, that's what Donovan says. Don't try to come over here and just get the good stuff. Come over here and experience the full you know, force of the white man. Come get the brutality. Come get yeah. some of the slavery. Come yes. get all the, the things racism. that you've been doing to everybody that's been over here. Don't just try to come and be selective, like, right? you know. Um, <laughs> We just want the good government loans. Right. We want all those right. good social programs. Mm-hmm. We want to be able to buy houses and businesses. We just want that. Mm-hmm. You sure you don't want a little bit of racism? Yes. <laughs> Come get your head busted. Okay. And then Terry, you says true. And Steve also says exactly. And so I'm not, listen, I'm not saying um, I don't have any uh, compassion for people who are trying to come over here. I'm just at... I'm more or less like this. And black people got bigger fish to fry. Not saying that we are more important, but as black people, we got to be more important at some point, right? We got to stop going to the fires of everyone else while our fire is burning. Like we got a raging inferno that's like about to take us out. And we're like, oh my God, someone has an issue. We need to run over there. It's a tragedy what they're doing to people. Ain't it a tragedy what they're doing to us? I'm just wondering, you know. And Terry says, come get it. (laughs) (laughs) Right, come get some. That's it. Come on and get it. Get a couple of helpers. So you'll know exactly what you're signing up for. Mm -hmm. You know? And then Al says, hey, Terry, I have a Mexican optometrist. His name is C. You know what you are. (laughs) Um, And Charles says, I get that too. When I say I am um, agnostic, all they hear is I'm an atheist. I generally say that is your shit, quote unquote, and keep it moving. But <laughs> I'm also a recovering Christian too, so they really tread lightly. Yes, I think a lot of us are, which I like what you said, a recovering Christian. That's actually a pretty dope term mm-hmm. if you think about it. A lot of us are a recovering Christian in that it, I get it. It takes some time to deprogram yourself of the things that you've learned. But once you start to learn, it's like, okay, there's no way I can consciously go back to that train of thought that. Um, dogma, if you will. And Jonelle says, nobody truly goes to anybody's house without an invite or truly knowing the people whom they visit. Yeah, imagine, like, have you guys ever had somebody knock at your door and you didn't know they were coming and you're like, did you call me? Funny I didn't get your email, your text. You know, because I'm running around here butt naked. And I wasn't waiting for nobody to come over here. So you're kind of annoyed. Now, I don't know if you're going to put a bow and arrow through them, but you know, you're at the very least, you're annoyed that people just encroached upon you, you know? Like, I gotta go put some clothes on now because you want to come over and do what? And so, um, let's see. And Jonah says, right uh, to thy own self be true first, because no one is going to truly look out for us first when it comes to their survival. Yes. That's right. But, you know, people say, well, you know, it's wrong. We need to help other people. How could you? You're so cold and callous. They need us. Why don't you? Because this usually is us that's doing that. Why don't you use that same energy to help us? Imagine how far we would be. You know, I saw a picture uh, today, and she appeared to be a black woman. I could be wrong, but she appeared to be a black woman. There's a uh, uh, Hispanic gentleman in North Carolina who was held up in a church for about a year because he was trying to Mm -hmm. escape deportation, and they fooled him, they being ICE. Fooled him and saying that, wow, come on down. Sign on that line and, you, and, and you're good to go. So he fell for it and they gaffled him up for a lack of better words. And so a lot of the members of the church got arrested. And there's a photo of it appears to be a black woman. She's being held by two police officers because she's trying to help this man. And it's like, lady, cool it. We need you over here. You know, we just had a black man in Alabama murdered in the mall by police officers who this guy was, you know, um, in the army doing, serving his country and trying to protect people because there was actually a gunman on the loose 
and the police officers murdered this black man and let people believe for about a day or so that he was actually the gunman. And then they came back and said, oops, he wasn't the gunman. So that's where we need our energy and with our own people trying to figure out how to get these goddamn targets off of our backs. And so um, Terry says, I had a Mexican act all holy when he first got here like he was so much better than me. Then the same white folks he worshipped fired his tall 20, <laughs> top fired his tail rather 25 years later. Wow. Yeah, you know, he was doing all that shucking and jiving, mm-hmm. thumbing his nose at your black ass. And they you know? all do it. Right, they like all, I'm so all much better than you. Oh, you know, like gringo loves me so much. Vietnamese, they all do they it. They all they're, do it. They're in the neighborhood and then they move yep. on up. Yep. They're better than us. I saw a video the other day of a, um, a Hispanic woman in Bed Bath & Beyond. We didn't see her call the lady a nigger, but the lady had on video saying, now call me a nigger now on, ta- on, on, on video. And the lady's running to get away from her. It's like, Wow. Mm -hmm. So now you come over here, however you got over here, thinking that you can do what white people are Mm -hmm. doing to black people. What what, what did I tell you when we first started talking about race? The first thing they teach these people in the immigration classes is nigga, 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 nigga. All right, you I don't got know it. About all of that, but if you can say it correctly, you pass. Wow. You're in. <laughs> and Terry says, "Applying to Al, <laughs> you, you're bad, Al." Uh, yes, he is. And then Al says, "Al's joke of the day. How come? How come Pizza Hut doesn't drive in the hood? Because Domino's was playing. You know what? You a fool." So anyway, um, I don't see any more um, comments in regards to that topic, and so we'll continue to discuss that. But in closing that topic, I would just say, listen, we can learn a lot from the Sentinelese people. In that, let's protect what's ours. Let's unify. Let's use our own resources. Let's keep everybody else out of our affairs so that we can do what we need to do. I'm not saying again by bows and arrows, but Malcolm X was on to something when he said, by any means necessary, we need to protect ourselves, our women, our children, you know, the men too. Because, you know, we know that men are being murdered wholesale by the police and being various raped. other people the whole nine. And our land and property. Let's do that, whatever it takes. And so, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oops, I missed a bunch of comments. Oh, so Steve says, yes, I'm so glad you're speaking on that murder. He only had a gun on him and they can, he was carrying the gun legally, okay? Open and carry, uh, Alabama. He only had a gun on him and they killed him and lied on the news about him. This shit is every day for our people and he was serving his country. No, a country. Well, his thing, right, that was an A country. Um, we can't even carry a weapon without being killed and framed. I mean, the first thing they said was he was an active shooter, right? And again, mm-hmm. they allowed everybody to believe for about a day or so that he was the one. As far as I know, the real gunman is still on the loose. And they also said that it was probably the police officers who shot at least one of the little girls that were shot. And so they, you know, have just completely ruined this man not only taking his life they ruined his name and think about all the countless white shooters who have just murked a lot of people and they are sitting in jail to tell about it you know one of them or they're free or enjoy burger king right after so Mm -hmm. i mean it's like that's what we need to focus on yeah a a good movie to see to see that dynamic is higher learning at the end where remy gets killed Uh notice the guy's a shooter. Everybody knows he's a shooter, and the cops trying to talk to him. Right. No, no, no. You could be an engineer. You could. Right. That. Well, that's a good movie to exactly. see. Exactly. Yeah. And John now says, "Just, uh, just look truly. Look at reality. Who is helping us, black people? And if it's real help, why are not why are not a self sufficient? I can be saying, why are we not as self sufficient people as free slaves? Not to mention free slaves and slaves doesn't even equate." When we need to awake from uh, pacification and illusion of inclusion, vote was BS and et cetera. Yeah, a lot of people say voting was um, a waste. Um, I tend to agree with that. I mean, let's just look at the Sentinelese people. Do they vote? We don't know. Total separation. Right. Are they saying, hey, India, you know, we're off in this island, but here's our votes. We're going to send them over there to you. Please count them because we need you to represent us. No, they're like, keep it. Shut it. Deuces. We don't care. Um, and then Terry also says, Demetra, Donovan, Al, much love. Much love onto you as well. 
Nikki, you probably got to go take yourself a nap or something. <laughs> and D, what's happening? It says, I have my doubts about many parts of the Bible. However, I believe in God as I understand him. I also believe that the Vatican knows the truth about our people. And if they Catholics in um, higher in um, parentheses were um, exposed, it would change everything we ever believed about God and our people. And absolutely. And we know that. I, I'm a Catholic. Don't say nothing about the Catholic Church. Don't get down in the okay? <laughs> But I agree with you in that. I, too, find issues with the Bible and uh, religion and stuff, but um, I do have a relationship with God. I would be a fool. I think most of us would be to believe that God doesn't exist to some way, shape, or form. But we know that um, in the motherland, that um, Africans, they worship and pray to deities and ancestors. And so that was their form of worship and spirituality. Well, and Indians do it, and the Aztecs right. did it, and all these indigenous people... Right, but if we've been sold the dream or the falsehood, and I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody who believes, but we've been sold the falsehood that we need to bow down or pay homage to a blonde hair, you know, a uh, blue eyed, pale white man who is going to, you know, take all of our worries away. Or no matter how much hell you catch here, when you're dead, that's when the magic that's happens. That's it. Right, you know, we uh, he has abs- believing in him per se has absolved us as black people of any uh, self-help techniques. You know, I'll just let go and let God. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wait on Jesus. And Charles says, um, and this white guy was acting all incredulous about why these people wasn't wanting to be bothered by outsiders. He mentioned how they all, um, they're all they almost naked. I said being want to uh, be left alone should be more than um, enough to be respected. And based on the historical evidence, Two, with that proceeds after it forced introduction to their Jesus. Yeah, I mean, he, you're right. He had his own um, ideology about these people. So what? They're naked. I mean, there's a lot of people right. Hell, we got people running around here naked. Mm-hmm. Why are you concerned about how naked they are? I can go to any building in America and see some woman's ass cheeks hanging out. So you concerned like you need to be over here <laughs> hollering Jesus to women and people who got their booties showing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't ever want to go to Magic Mountain again and see as many booty cheeks as I've seen. I mean, I'm just saying. Hell, he could start in a church where there's a lot of people who are half-dressed, worshiping the name of the Lord. I mean, if he really wanted to be concerned what people had on. I'm just, I know he's not here to hear that no more, but if he were. And John L. says, that open and carry is a trick for black people. A black man and a white man military is fighting a war on two fronts. His skin Foreign and domestic. No, absolutely. It's just like, it is a trap. Oh, I can open and carry. I was carrying, yeah, you know what, though? You're dead. I mean, what happened when the Black Panthers in the 60s tried to um, open and carry in California? Because uh, California Ronald Reagan changed the law. Sure he did. And he solely changed the law. Based because, on that. Because mm-hmm. black, black men was like, walking the streets. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, this is an M16. What do yes. you have? Oh, I have a 38. Oh, nice. And they had the law with them showing. Right. And so that's when Ronald Reagan, who was then the governor, was like, yeah, we didn't mean that for you, Negro. <laughs> we're going to change the law. So we're going to change the law, which is why we don't have, we have a concealed weapon laws here. Um, and Jonelle, you say, uh, what happened to the count in Florida? Um, is they still counting or <laughs> or uh, monkey statement wins? No, she conceded. Yeah, she, they, they conceded. Yeah. Uh, Stacey Abrams, she says she didn't, no, um, not uh, Stacey Abrams, the guy. Um, yeah. Gilliam, he conceded that he lost or whatever, and so did Stacey Abrams. He conceded Abrams. That, that damn night, the damn fool. Right, but then he backtracked, but Stacey Abrams in Georgia, she said, I don't concede to the fact that he won, per se. I'm just saying, okay, he won by the vote count, but we know there was some chicanery going right. on up in this piece. Right, so that's what happened to Haymarket. She said, um, that's the part that bothers me the most, that we keep looking to this blonde hair and blue-eyed white guy, period. But that, with that being said, if the people that hate us the most can accept uh, Bible's version of Jesus and they were shooting, never accept us, maybe back to Africa is the only way to do it our way. I mean, like I said to y'all last week, going back to Africa is looking better and better. I know Donovan ain't going. He's like, shit, I'm in Atlanta land of milk and honey now. What you talking about? This good white man? Right. He can't let it go. So, you know, Donovan... Um, I had to figure out a way to do this show with Donovan <laughs> over here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's that's I mean, why not even why not just entertain it? You know, think about it. 
And Jordana says, did you see the preacher fly in on the uh, zip line in a room full of black people? Yes, I saw it the other day, yeah. In a room full of black Early people day. talking about Jesus' return. Clearly, Jesus must be black because he's late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw he's on a zip line coming into the church. Crazy. And, Crazy. I, and I bet the congregation would just go on bananas. <laughs> I mean, it's like, come on now. Theatrics. That's, that's Theatrics. why I can't be in nobody congregation because they will put me out, throw some holy water on me or something because I I like have this giggle box that is uncontrollable. And if I had saw that Negro slide in there on a the zip line, I'd have lost it. They'd be like, get her. She's overcome with the Holy Ghost. No, I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing. I'm all right. Um, Al says, all those so-called uh, booties at Magic Mountain, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Listen, I ain't worried about nobody else's booty per se. I just don't want to see nobody else's booty, but I'm saying if John, um, I guess we can maybe loosely call him John the Baptist. He had went over there trying to save the sin of the uh, sin of these people. He could have just started here if he was worried about people not having no clothes on. I mean, I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, I'm going to transition into our next topic. Donovan, how much time we have? Because I'll let you watch it again. Okay, we got 20 minutes. So this is a topic. I'm a little bit on the loose side that I want to explore, and I'll continue to read the comments from this last topic. Now, um, so here we go. Shall we humor you guys? I need you guys' help. Honestly. All right. So the other topic I mentioned was the play thing or the main thing. Hear me out. My father always told me, uh, I, I should say my sister and I, um, not to allow a man to make you his play thing, quote unquote. He said that if a man is serious about you, he will make a commitment to you and make you his main thing. So what's a plaything? A plaything is a woman that is used for a man's sexual pleasure. She is a woman that is not made into a uh, quote unquote an honest woman as the old folks used to say. She is also a woman who waits around for years and years for a man to decide that he is going to make her the main thing. What's a main thing? A main thing is a woman who is not just desired for her body, but she is appreciated in every other way, shape, and form. She is a woman that has a commitment from her man, whether it is by marriage or some other ceremonious way of illustrating to her and other people that she belongs to him and he belongs to her. She is a woman that a man will forsake all others for. Basically, he stops playing the field to be with her and only her. Now, the reason I wanted to discuss this today is because recently I've seen and read a few articles of celebrity women who have endured the lengthy relationships with men who never made them the main thing or finally made them the main thing after being together for 50, 11 years and having a church full of kids. Of course, We've all heard about the tragic death of Kim Porter, P. Diddy's baby mama, and their 13-year-old, their 13-year relationship. And now, I should probably be a little bit more respectful and not just liken her to his baby mama, but they weren't married, so she actually was the mother of his children. Okay? And remember, she also was the mother of Albie Scher's older son. Right. Um, and now, Jules Santana has just proposed. Like, I'm not trying to give y'all a rundown on a gospel report. I'm, I'm bringing a point to this. Uh, Jewel Santana has just proposed to his baby mama or mother of his children, Kim Bella, whoever she is. Oh, God. That, uh, go ahead. Uh, you know who Kim yeah. Bella is. Um, after being together for 10 years and having two children, or while having two children. And let's not forget the women we personally know that are in similar situations. So, men, this is my question for you guys. And women, you can answer this too um, if you have some answers. What or who does a woman have to be to become the main thing? And not just the play thing. And women, how much time do you give a man to make you his main thing before you exit the relationship? Now, I hope I've been very clear. And while you guys are thinking about that, I will go ahead and answer the uh, last few comments I saw come across uh, the, the screen. And let's see. And then, uh, Marcus, you say, uh, tell them in order to comment, they have to tap the link to join the conversation as they are watching um, but not joined in. So as Marcus said, if you want to comment, um, please tap the link and you are able to comment. I don't know why you're not able to comment now. As I said, I am public, so I don't know what the deal is. But it sounds like if you tap the link, you will be able to uh, comment and join in on the conversation. And, and Charles just says, even the people uh, praise to uh, Black Mary. Hmm. You're talking about the, uh, what is it, Donovan? The Black Madonna? Yeah. Uh, 
at the shrine of the Black Madonna, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Uh, he says, uh, uh huh, never mind. Catholics, Black Catholics, Black Christians, American Christians. Yeah, I mean, we just kind of um, adapt and kind of do our own thing. I guess the Black Madonna's uh, a white one with some Lowry salt on it. I don't know, <laughs> some extra seasoning. I, I, I don't know. Jonelle says, people fear reality and fear the truth. Shaking my head. He forgot the horses and the clouds. We need to truly drop all this white wash we've been um, served and still being served to and do the math. Well, well. you know, um, that's kind of the benefit of Christianity to a certain degree is because if we keep them sleep, mm -hmm. then we keep them here. We don't want them to go outside of here because then they might wake up and learn other things. I mean, like um, um, Charles, you said it very beautifully that you're a recovering Christian, as a lot of us mm -hmm. are. But just because you're a recovering Christian don't mean that you don't you can't explore other things. I mean, it's good to know about other things and how um, other people believe. But like I said, that's kind of the benefit to religion is that we keep these people enclosed and with this ideology. Mm -hmm. And we tell them if anybody tries to teach you anything different, then they're the devil. We need to rebuke them. You got to fight them. Right. I mean, you think about... Um, the, the relationship of Christian, Christians, black Christians, and um, the nation of Islam, or I should say specifically Farrakhan, and that, I mean, I've been in church where I've heard uh, pastors talk bad about Farrakhan. Oh, he's evil. He's this. He's mm -hmm. that. He's not a god. I've heard that myself. And so, you know, now that I'm awake, it's like, well, Farrakhan is trying to teach black people to be self-sufficient and to do for self, but the church is not teaching that. So who is really evil? Isn't it evil to keep a person docile and not teach them to go and seek the truth for themselves, which it does say in the Bible, right. I don't know it, why they haven't gotten to that. Yeah, doesn't Farrakhan teach stop breaking the laws, be uh, you know, respectful, get right. off drugs, do right. yourself. I mean he's he's teaching the things that most Christians say they teach. And he's actually out there in the field doing these things. Mm -hmm. So and then Jonah says, Yeah, the black Madonna. Like I don't really know a lot about her. I've heard a lot of people talk about her. Uh, people worshiping in the shrine of the Black Madonna and that kind of stuff. Maybe I'll, you know, do some research. Hey, Darnell, he says, I have never believed in their God as even as a child. Um, he says, I believe in a creator. And I think that's where a lot of people are. I think we'd be foolish to say, hey, just one day the something in the universe clashed with something else in the universe and we're here. Like my daughter, um, she's very enlightened. And that social construct, <laughs> yeah, it's her favorite word. You know, she's learned in school social construct. But she says we're just stupid to believe that there are no aliens or there's no other, um, there's no life outside of us. How cavalier and arrogant of us to think that it's just us here. You know, we are the only species that occupy the universe. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how do we know? How do we know? And so, the point that I'm making is. Something created that, and I doubt it was some two rocks that banged together, and all of a sudden we're here. You know, I, I'm just saying I have my doubts. And, and Charles says that's definitely what a, a play thing is—the exact opposite of a main thing. And you, my, and mind you, we may want to say an ex uh, exclusive main things uh, slash monogamous, but in this day, uh, do do do. Say uh, in this day, we fake love is what? Oops is what gets the 24-7 reality show. <laughs> I'm still rooting for real love to make a comeback. <laughs> real love with flavor yes. of love. <laughs> to put some Howard Hewitt on. You'll be all right. That show, I, I actually have uh, watched that show. To me, it was hilarious. It's like, come on now. Y'all know damn well y'all ain't trying to be with no flavor of love. Mm -hmm. I mean... Flag, flag. I, I, I seem like a cool dude, but it just, I don't know. I, I, couldn't I? I couldn't fathom a guy looking like that on top of me. I couldn't fathom it. Well, a lot of women could. They was trying to be Mrs. Flavor Flav, you know? Uh, and then you say, <laughs> there's definitely a life in the universe. Yeah, like, who are we to decide? Oh, we're just us. We're the only ones here. We're the supreme beings. And they're probably looking at us. Then somebody made a joke about that's why aliens don't come that here. That was no me. More. That was me. <laughs> That was like, that's why aliens don't come here no more, yeah. because they're like, we good. No, no, they, they see how these white people deal with everybody. <laughs> you see the white people that scared the aliens off, like, nah. They don't come here no more. We straight <laughs> over here. And Mark says, the problem with Farrakhan is that he tries to teach and promote, um, it is unrealistic, period. He should try just focusing on one thing, such as getting us 
to put the gun down that we point at each other. He does talk um, about as that. a people, period. He needs to achieve a big win. The black community wall. Two things. And Marcus, I love you to death, but you yeah. know I'm gonna challenge you on this. Two he things. Does talk about that. Why does he need to achieve a big win? Why can't we achieve a big win? Also, the the, the and Dr. Claude Anderson uh, talks about this a lot in that. Why is it that we feel like we need to put the guns down? Now, I would concede your point that we need to stop killing each other with them, but guns are necessary for protection. He says, he being Dr. Claude Anderson says, it's only in the black community that you see these put down the gun drives. Mm -hmm. We'll give you $5 in the chicken dinner for your gun. You know, stop killing. But So what happens, let's say, if this big Armageddon or this race war goes down? What are we going to do, throw chicken bones at them? So we need the guns to protect ourselves. And so I would say that instead of us killing each other, we need to educate ourselves on why it is important to have guns in our community, right? Everybody, every citizen should have a gun in case the government comes in on them. Right. I mean, every, everybody else has a gun. You know, there's a saying that America has a love affair with guns, and it is now coming back on them, mm-hmm. on uh, Americans. And let's be specific. It's mostly white people, white men with a whole arsenal of guns that are, you know, doing all the mass murders. Not all, but most of them. They're doing most of the mass murdering. And so, you know, as the the, the poor, unfortunate guy in Alabama, the black guy who was murdered, he had a gun. Uh, obviously, it didn't help him. But, I mean, at some point in time, we have to just, we got to we gotta figure out how to protect ourselves without killing Except each other. That's what is. And um, Jonelli says... Um, Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, teaches us as well as Minister Farrakh Khan um, teaches us to analyze it and study um, study it if it be the truth. Lay hold to it. That's one thing the nation don't even worry about because if oops, let's see. Because if it's the truth, it's us. Okay? And then let's see. Somebody was sending me a text message. That's why it's going slow. Sorry about that. And Darnell says, we need to pick up guns for protection. Yes, I should have just read your comment. I mean, we we need to protect ourselves, not kill each other, mm-hmm. but protect ourselves. And Al says, um, uh, Chad Ochocinco once had a dating reality show. It's like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was horrible. Cares? You know, it's like, they just... I'm not saying that other people don't have reality shows, but they give us the worst stuff. And we uh, somehow mistake that as love. First of all, those people are knowing each other for two weeks. How the hell you fall in right. love with somebody you ain't never met? How the hell you fall in love with somebody and 16 other people getting a, a stab at it? <laughs> I mean, I just, come on. Um, and Marcus just says, I shift the focus to him because he puts himself in the position of leadership is um, failing hard to get his place in life. Um, and if he's going to use it properly, then he needs to achieve a big win with uh, with the black community. Um, yeah, Jonah, I'll let you have that. I'll, I'll let you deal with it because, you know, you just know how to. And Jonah says, Marcus, I see you always worried about what the minister is doing. One, we don't even carry guns nor believe in the gun. I suggest you watch the Honorable Elijah Muhammad via YouTube. His lectures um, in, entitled, No Guns, Allah is Sufficient for Us. We will take your gun. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's Farrakhan's job, per se, to do anything for us. What better to do for people than to give them knowledge? knowledge. When you have knowledge, they, what do they say? Knowledge is what? Power. Knowledge is power. And so if he's arming with, with knowledge, and he's been doing that for over 60 years, it's like, to me, saying that if it, if it's not for Farrakhan to, to personally get us by our little hands and lead us, that's saying that we're invalids. That we are not capable of doing for self. And that's really been the basis of his message. Like, we need to do for self. As I say to a lot of people, I mean, you try to get a, a million people, million black people, um, gathered in one spot to get them to hear the message of, you know, what he titled at the time, the blueprint of what to do once you go back into your communities. That was in 1995. And so is it his fault that we didn't take that message and go... Um, do something with it? Was he supposed to come to our doors personally and say, all right, um, Demetra, let me see what you got from the message, okay? What are you doing to apply it? I mean, golly, if there's a million people there, you honestly think 
that Farrakhan has the time to make sure a million people do these things? Or should he just trust that if I give you the ball, you're going to run with it? I mean, I'm just asking. Uh, and then Marcus says, his lectures may entitle, uh, may entitle, don't carry the gun, don't use the gun, and don't shoot the gun, but he's not selling it very well to the community that he's addressing. Um, I, 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 I I wholeheartedly disagree with that. How is he not selling it well? I mean, the man has been on the podium for 60 years, not only um, talking about it, but he's been doing the work. And so at what point in time does the black man, I mean, Marcus Garvey uh, called black people years and years ago, almost 100 years ago, it says, up you mighty nation, um, uh, do what you will. Up you mighty nation. He didn't say, let me go pick you up. He says, you get up. You mighty nation and do what you will. And so at what point in time do we say, okay, I am capable. I am able to go save myself. That's like if I see my child drowning in the water, I ain't going to say, Farrakhan, can you come get my daughter out the water? She's drowning. I'm going to go get my own daughter. So that's to me kind of how I see that. So we can't keep blaming one person for the ills of black people, because let's be honest, black people were already in a bad shape before Farrakhan even got on the scene. So to say that it is his fault that black people are not progressing is, I, I love you, but it's ill-informed and it's a little bit reckless. I mean, that's just my opinion. Um, And so let's see. Uh, oops, make sure I didn't miss any comments. Do, 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 do. Secret Guy says, six years of asking us to do for ourselves. You're right, D. I mean, at some point in time, we just got to say, all right, we got it. We got the instructions. We good. Let's go. Come on, y'all. Let's go. I mean, at some point in time, we got to do that, right? And Jonelle says, Malcolm taught the guns, um, taught the guns, the Panthers use guns. Khalid got into guns. Uh, Brother Khalid Muhammad uh, got into guns. Um, now, who's going to sell you bullets? Do you make guns? Is your God bigger than a gun? Well, I mean, I think that's an awesome question, but um, I also think about to contrast what you're saying. I don't disagree with you, uh, Jonelle, but I always think about what my father says in that prayer ain't worth a damn at a bear meeting. And so if a bear is coming to eat your ass, prayer would probably be nice, but you probably might want to pick up something to get that bear. I mean, I'm just saying, I think that's what I would do, whether it was a pencil, a fork or something. Donovan, how are we doing on time? Doing great. All right. And then Al says, what does all that have to do with play? <laughs> the main thing, well, answer the question, brother. What do you got about that? What, what, what do you have to say about the play thing and the main thing? Is hint, it, hint, hint, hint. <laughs> we're addressing all the questions. This is how we learn, right? But go, feel free to interject, please. And Secret Guard says, y'all about to get the arrested talking about guns. Right, you know, listen, I don't look good at orange. <laughs> you know, it just kind of washes me out. So, uh, no, I'm not. Listen, y'all know what I'm saying. By no means am I saying to pick up guns and do nothing. I'm not saying that, but y'all know what I'm saying. Um, it, it it's not illegal to have a gun if you do it right, and so I'm not telling y'all to do anything. And illegal. I have a lot. Wait, well, I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so do it the right way. But we should be armed. We should be able to protect ourselves. You know, we ain't gonna say stop in the name of Jesus, Clinton. Do not, you know, string my husband about this house. A gun will say that a little bit better for you. I'm just thinking. And Marcus, she says, and yet he's been on the podium 60 years and we are still killing each other. The operative word is we, not him, are killing each other. Um, and it outrages, I think you say outrageous numbers. Maybe he needs to get off the podium and get in the streets, period. See, again, Marcus, you're speaking from a point of um, not being knowledgeable because the minister is in the streets. I impress upon you to find any pastor in any podium that's in the streets more than him. Um, and he says, ask for the young uh, doo -doo -doo, lady who will address me. I'm going, I'm doing my best to uh, my community, but people of color don't want to help people of color, help people of color. But see, that's why I have to slump over in this chair because you just said, and I think I read you right, that People won't help you. Well, why do you think they don't help Farrakhan? I mean, I don't think you're any, uh, Farrakhan is more, any more special than you. So if they ain't going to help you, then you, I mean, I think you kind of answered your own question. That's if I read you right. You know what I'm saying? And Jonelle says, show me whom 
been successful using a gun which their oppressors sell them while they have the upgraded weapon <laughs> and versions and more powerful weapon. Yeah. Um, well, I agree, but it's just, we got to start somewhere. I mean, like I said, holy water is probably nice, but it ain't going to keep no clan and no white supremacists and anybody who's trying to do you harm. I'm off you. I don't think. I mean, I, I don't know. And Amanda says, I'm here. Yes, you're oh, here. Yes. Donovan just passed out. Wake up. <laughs> wake up. And then Jonelle says, that's true. You have you pray and you fight. But victory is not with the aggressor. I've been in situations. I'm blessed to know the reality of Allah within us. And Allah is sufficient. No, I absolutely agree. I do not ever want you guys to think that I discount the power of God. I know that God is all powerful. I'm not saying that. But I also think that God has I've given us the ingenuity. To be able to defend ourselves. I think, right? I think that he's given us that ability to say, hey, protect yourself. Just like somebody used the analogy of somebody going into a cave and there was a sign that says, hey, don't go in there. God has already warned you. I mean, we don't need nothing to need the ground to open up and say, hey, stay out of there. And then now says PSA on the Demetri K show. There will be no negative comments about the brother minister for our comp period point. Wait, <laughs> you heard it here. Uh, <laughs> yes, we um have a very um how many minutes we got? Oh, we got four minutes. Okay, so we we we, we love um the minister for our here, and I'm not saying that people shouldn't have their own opinion about him, but I just say that you should be able to back up your opinion with facts. If you say that our should get out of the streets, I I impress upon you to find the time. When he wasn't out there, I mean, this man is in his 80s, in his 80s, in this trenches, talking to black people. And he ain't just talking to the upper echelon of black people. He's talking to the people who are in what we call the neighborhoods and, you know, all people from all walks of life. So to say that he needs to get out there, I honestly, I, I'm of um, the notion that he doesn't need to get out there. I think he's been out there enough. I think it's now our time, our turn to get out there and go out there and reach and teach our people. Why are we jumping on the back of one man who has shown and proved and done things um, in the black community? Why do we? Why are we jumping on his back? Why are we leading him with that? Where are all the other so-called leaders? Where's your Al Sharpton, your Jesse Jackson, and all these, you know, the Black Caucus and the, all these, why are all these other people who love black people so much? When is the last time you've seen them on the South Side of Chicago talking to black people? When? You know, and then also, you know, if people always say, well, Farrakhan, you know, he doesn't do anything for black people. They, the Nation of Islam have schools, businesses, they have their own. You know, place to worship amongst a whole host of things. They train and teach black people how to be good men and women. So, what are we talking about here? What are we? What are we? What are we? What do we need to, uh, else to see that he is about the business of doing what he asks us to do? What else do we need to see? And then Al says, "I was going to church and on my phone it said no service, so I turned around and went home." <laughs> ah, you a fool! So, um. We got a couple more minutes here. I don't see any more comments. Um, if you guys um, would like to answer the question, uh, that's fine. If not, it's fine too. We can address it uh, um, at another time. And so, uh, uh, Joan L says, Marcus, maybe you need to stop hating on the man and assist in the efforts. It's easy to focus on the negative. It's easy to say what can't be done. It's easy to go blind when you don't have the vision. Um, let's see. When you don't have ooh-wee, the vision. Here's a white man that built a city in a desert. So, where there is no vision, the people perish. You think whites is going to stop the rise of the black nation? Farrakhan is doing his part and more. He is forging the way despite our conversation and doing nothing for the homeless, drug dealers, hoes, and etc. Yeah, I mean, and you know, to the point that I made, to your point, I mean, he has done the work. He is doing the work. I mean, what more do we want this man to do? It's funny how... We have these pastors sitting in these churches getting fat and greedy off of the congregation, but we don't ask them to go out into to the community. And they have a pulse on the black community. They set up shop in a black community that is robbed of its resources. The resources are going into the church. And these pastors aren't going out into the community. The most that the pastors are doing, I could be wrong, I, but I doubt it. The most that these pastors are doing is going soul winning to get more people to come into the church 
to fund the mission of the church. But how many of them, and I'm not saying that none of them are doing it, but honestly, we, we um, dog Farrakhan so much, but we never say, hey, pastor so-and-so over there, first missionary Baptist, whoop, whoop. When is the last time you went out to the hood and, you know, and just talk to black people other than trying to get them to come to church? And to the guys on the podcast, thank you so much for tuning in. I will talk to you guys next week. And so when was the last time we uh, asked them to do this? How dare us ask our pastors to go out into the trenches and talk?